Welcome, everyone. It is Saturday Mailbag, and don't adjust your dials. That's right. It's Mark Riley in for John Roca, and I'm joined by the lovely Wendy Lee coming in hot for Mailbag. Hey, How are you, my friend? I'm doing so good. I've good. recovered from D23. Yes. It's been a great week. Uh, it's been a great week, and we're happy to have you here yes. on this Saturday edition of Collider Mailbag. A reminder, if you want to get your question answered, you can send a question anytime you want to mailbag at collider.com or look for the call to action. We do our hashtag Collider Mailbag from Instagram, Twitter. We grab your questions and we answer them here. Wendy Lee, are you ready to answer some of these questions? I just sent you a question for next week. Oh, you did? Yeah, oh, okay. Emailed it. Oh, you emailed it. All <laughs> right. I like that. Perfect. So we're going to start here with question number one. All right. And speaking of uh, D23, we got a hot one coming in. Everybody's talking about it, Wendy. Jack Harrison at Digibop writes, could Dark Ray be a flashback to when Palpatine was young? Matt Smith? Question mark? Perhaps he cloned his first apprentice. Now, I like this question oh, as a Star okay. Wars fan. As a Star Wars fan, I like the idea of uh, we're playing specula uh, speculation game here, all right? Mm -hmm. um, wouldn't it be fun if a young emperor, like during the kind of the events of Phantom Menace, created Rey? That would be so interesting. And she's been in hiding all this time. And then there was another <laughs> clone, which is the Ray we know and love right now. But mm -hmm. then somewhere in Rise of Skywalker, she comes across the very first apprentice of Emperor Palpatine. What do you think of that, Wendy? I mean, I think it's an interesting theory. Yeah. Uh, and I like that, Jack, that he put in there, maybe Matt Smith. There's a rumor that Matt Smith is playing like nobody, like Lucasfilm is mum on what Matt oh, yeah. Smith is doing in this movie, but he is in there. So I personally think, we talk about it on Rule of Two. Wendy, did you ever read um, Dark Empire? It's a comic Not book series. Yet. It's where the the emperor cloned himself and then used dark side energy oh. to jump in the body. Uh huh. I have heard. I have heard of it. So yes. it was a younger emperor. So a lot. The theory going around now is that Matt Smith would be playing a young emperor Palpatine. I could see it. I could see it too. So what if there is maybe a flashback where we go back and it's a young emperor Matt Smith with his first apprentice, a cloned Ray. I don't know. I don't know. It, 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 it's it, a little muddy in the waters, but Wendy? So we're theorizing here. So nothing yeah. is correct and nothing is incorrect because the movie correct. won't be out until Christmas. Right. Um, look, the possibility of it being a flashback and that she is a clone, to me, unlikely. I right. really think the footage is a vision. Yeah. Um, it's more likely, but... As I was kind of going through like the YouTube comments and just like pe what people are seeing on Twitter, mm -hmm. there's one thing that kind of did jump out at me. So um, amongst other things, sure. like the possibility her, of her being a clone because what we saw in The Last Jedi when she was in that room with all the mirrors and her parents are nobody, it kind of, if you want to read into it that way with that direction, sure. Yeah. It definitely makes sense. But the one thing that jumped out at me and somebody said this uh to me is that it, for it to be a vision or a flashback, it, they're very specific with that one specific lightsaber. Right. It is very too specific for it to be a vision. Ah. And my thing is, well, I hope that you have her use it because you're right, it is very, very specific. So with that saying, you know, maybe it is a flashback. Let's just play with the idea. We're yeah. just playing here. It's happening. Let's pretend yep. that it is a flashback. Okay. And the, the 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 dark ray is like you know, is, is that what the question is? Like, could dark ray be a flashback? Right? Could be that, a flashback. Yeah, a flashback. we're playing. I so, I picked this to just theorize yeah. on dark ray. I mean, it's, it's always fun to theorize. Yeah. And as long as we're not too set on the idea, and then we don't see it in the movie, and we're not like upset about it. Right. But okay, back to the flashback. Sorry for jumping back and forth. That's okay. The lightsaber. Mm -hmm. We've seen that before in Clone Wars. Right. And in Being, Rebels, right, the, when uh, Kanan with the Temple Guard. Yep. So different color, Kyber yep. Crystal, yep. obviously, because the Temple Guard has, I think, yellow or white. Right. Uh, and then the uh, the Jedi, he was not seen with the in the Clone Wars mm -hmm. with a bunch of clone troopers. Mm -hmm. Can't remember his name. Ken Knapsack would know. Ken Knapsack would know. Uh, yep. But he also had those fold-out lightsabers. So what if that timeline did match up with the existing of with the with the existence of that style of lightsaber yeah then it's so, it's canon it is in there we've seen it so you could kind of like you know like kind of you know sneak your way back to that theory if you really wanted to like really really <laughs> make yeah. it work for your theory so sure anything is possible 
Um, I personally really think it is just a vision, but yeah. I, I love that lightsaber. I can't wait for them to sell it at Galaxy's Edge because I will buy it. Yeah, I want that lightsaber too. And, so cool. you know, no theory, no speculation goes unheard here. We'd love to, to speculate. On Rule of Two, we are thinking, I, well, Rule of Two, I've said this, Christian is saying it on Collider Live that we believe that's a, uh, that's a clone. And so- You, got, to, you do believe it's a I, clone? I want to believe it's a clone. <laughs> I I'm want starting, to believe. I'm starting to lean towards the vision, which oh, oh, kind of makes sorry, it- Sorry, Adam. That's okay. Oh, oh you're <laughs> apologizing to Adam. Hi, Adam, thank you. Um, I'm starting to believe it's a vision because uh, it's just, I wonder if Lucasfilm, J.J. Abrams, everybody involved would go there. I love the idea of the emperor being the puppet master like he's been, not only in the prequels, but sort of in the in the original trilogy, but doing it again, but cloning Luke's hand, oh, grabbing God. some different Sith Lords, some Jedi Masters, making a Petri dish and creating <laughs> Rey. And then it's all about balance that it seems to be because we have Rey that's always drawn, she's drawn to the dark side. She yeah. even said it, Luke said it in the cave on Last Jedi. And then Kylo Ren has been saying, I'm, I'm, the light is calling to me again. I wanna go to the darkness. So oh there's two oppo opposing sides, right? So balance of the force. Dark Ray, Ray we know and love right now. What if Dark Ray was the Emperor creating this apprentice, secretly training her, so wherever we happen to land at the end of Rise of Skywalker on the Death Star, Ray is waiting there. Dark Ray is waiting there, and cool. Ray has to fight her. I mean, uh, look. I as love that. As long as we get a full-out battle of Ray and Dark Ray, that would be so And they so get to rad. use that lightsaber. I am, I am down. I uh, am down too. I, I just don't want to throw any theories away because no, not that's yet. one like that's like the funnest part of being a star wars fan when we get new trailers we can theorize yes i just i just have learned to not be so stuck in my theory that when i don't see it on the screen i get upset yep so that's what i'm gonna take away with that's this what time. i'm that's what i'm taking away and as uh the the force center boys say scrimshaw and landa and knapsack speculate responsibly that's what I would Make what would that say. A bumper sticker. It is a bumper sticker, and you can get it. Go check out Force Center. I love those guys. All right, let's go on to number uh, two. Wendy, take it away. Number two comes from Bobby Singer, who writes: Two months ago marked the sixth anniversary of Man of Steel. Yeah. Yeah. When the film was initially released, people either really loved it or hate what it did for Superman Mytho. Mm. Where do you think MOS stands after all the DC films that have come since? Do you think the later film's failure to, de to deliver on Superman makes people appreciate MOS as it is at least a Superman focused film or have the later films botched the character showing that people were right and that the direction of the character was taken in the wrong from the start? It's a great question. Ooh, you're yeah. the biggest Superman fan I know. So what's your take on this question? Well, why, why I picked this yeah. one. So the question really to break it down is like, okay, Man of Steel comes out, didn't do as well as a lot of people uh, wanted to do. I personally loved it. I loved the depiction of Kal-El. I loved the depiction of Krypton. This movie is still my favorite, favorite film in the D DCEU, obviously, I'm a Superman fan, <laughs> but it was so, I, I, I loved it. I loved that we were breaking down the mythos of Superman and really just laying him bare, like, you know, that scene when he's in the closet and his mom comes, Diane Lane comes and goes, you're on an island. It's like him not being able to control his powers, all these different things. It was a radically different Superman than the one we saw with Donner's 1978 version, which I fight for truth, justice, and the American way. This Superman, Henry Cavill, was really in here. He was really wondering about his place in the world. In this world that we're in now, what would people do if a being like that stepped out into the light? They would lose their mind. <laughs> yeah. Today's society, it's a very different than today than the society in 1978. So I think a lot of people that are really tied to Superman want the Donner version. Correct. I love it. Still my favorite Superman movie of all time and my favorite comic book movie of all time is the original Superman. But that's nostalgia speaking. That's me growing up speaking. When I look at Man of Steel, I really identify with that Superman today. So do did audiences, okay, are they appreciating Man of Steel six years later after the debauchery of Justice League. I think a lot of DC fans, uh, fans are, and I think there are a lot of people that do want a lighter Superman. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to tell. Me personally, I think they blew it with their handling of Superman 
after Man of Steel. Because what do they do? They jam Batman in there to get to Justice League, which I love Batman v Superman. I really do. Mm -hmm. It's still one of my favorites. But then Justice League just all fell apart. You skipped over the Death of Superman storyline. Yep. He just comes back and he's like, hey, I'm back and I'm the Superman you remember, everyone. Well, what happened to Man of Steel Superman? What happened to Batman v Superman Superman when he was just doing his thing and trying to figure out his place in the world? So I think they botched it when we got to, to Justice League, but that's just my take. There God, you go, I, Wendy. I, I really couldn't have said it better. I, out of the DCEU, mm -hmm. I really think Man of Steel was my favorite out of that and Batman v Superman and Justice League. That's right. not to say that I didn't have fun in Justice League. Right. It was a bit of like a, a little bit of a hodgepodge of-, of It was the, Frankenstein's it, it, monster, I call just, it. it <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It was just too fast, too quick. Cause yeah. before, Batman v Superman, I really would have loved a Man of Steel yeah. 2. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or yeah. Man of Steel 2 coming after. Yeah. I, w I really would have liked that, but that's not what we got. And instead, we just got, it's like, here is all the characters. Wonder Woman did really well, and we have Aquaman coming. So quick, let's put the five together. And we ignored the mythos yeah. of um, Man of Steel, in which I really had hoped that we would have gotten a continuation of that. And at this point, we're not gonna get that anymore because it looks like Cavill's left. I know the cape, his cape, he's hung up the cape. Yeah. Um, and it's it, just it's really disappointing. Yeah, it's really disappointing because now what we get a new Batman and a new Superman. I guess, but then and, and but then we have Aquaman sequel coming with the same Aquaman. So Jason then nothing's Momoa. really cohesive. It's All not the cohesive. timeline's gonna be a little messed up. It's weird. Yeah, it's are definitely they gonna do weird. maybe like an alternate because they have the Flash, so they can maybe Ezra save Miller it. is still back. Yeah, Ezra Miller is there, and when you have the Flash, you can mess with the timeline a little bit. Yeah, maybe I, 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 that's the route they go. I don't know, but I really, really, really wish they would have locked in Man of Steel too. Oh, I, you're you're preaching to the choir here. Uh, same with me. I miss uh, I miss the idea of having a Man of Steel two with Henry Cavill. I I worry that it's gone, but that's our long winded answer. That yes, I think because of what happened with Superman in particular through Justice League and whatever happened there and the fallout afterwards is that people are going back and really appreciating Man of Steel a lot more. Oh, yeah. I think so. So I great. mean, I like that one from, from the get-go. I was like, oh, people are like, oh, it's too slow. Oh, oh it's boring. I was like, I don't know. I enjoyed it. it. I enjoyed Savor it. Savor it. It yeah. was really, it's such, a, it's such a great, I mean, out of all the Superman movies, it goes Superman 1978, and then right at number two is Man of Steel, for me at least. And a lot of people are going to lose their mind because Superman 2, a lot of people still love, but that's my number three. Anyways, that's a great question. Thank you, Bobby Singer. Let's go on to an Instagram question from Masters of underscore the house who writes hey riley and guest what specifically are you most looking forward to from disney plus a series or a movie thanks and stay sweaty do we have to pick just one because nah, I, I, nah, we're playing with it. We're, i have a whole list let's let's go through the list um i'll give you my number one though I'll, can i guess it okay out of all the things that's going to come even announcements not things already shot correct announcements anything disney plus what's my favorite wendy what do I? What am I looking for the most? Can I do like maybe like two out of three if I don't get it right the first time? Sure. Okay. Uh, Mandalorian. Almost. Oh, Clone Wars. No, almost. What? You're you're in the ballpark. Really? It's a Star Wars. Oh, Obi Wan. Obi Wan. <laughs> yep, that is the one. That's the one I'm most excited for because that's the story I've really wanted to explore. It's the one I've been hearing about over and over and over again for years. And it, it, it really has been confirmed. There's a lot of people, in, uh, sources that I know through friends that was going to be a movie mm -hmm. it really was solo then kind of took all the air air out of that <laughs> they pulled it back they developed it they fleshed it out now we're going to get maybe six or seven we're going to get a six or seven hour obi-wan movie in the form of a limited oh, series i that's think fine. and that's fine by me so it's the number one i want to know what obi-wan was doing set after eight years after revenge of the sith is where it's going to take place that's oh, the one wow. that gets me excited. How does Obi-Wan look after Luke? Will Joel Edgerton return as Uncle Owen? Will he face Vader? Will Darth Maul show up? There is so much. Will Obi-Wan Kenobi have a drink with Jabba the Hutt on Tatooine? We don't know, but there's so much you can explore. I can't wait. And oh my God, you know what I thought about? Huh? Boba Fett's alive in that time period as well. <gasps> Boba Fett could show up in the Obi-Wan movie. Okay. Ba, ba, ba. Just what got you, you really excited. I mean, the the full slate, just from announcements to everything that they ha already have coming up, ready to launch in uh, November, yeah. is all very exciting. Obviously, looking forward to the Mandalorian. Yep. Very excited about Obi-Wan. Like, 
I just I just can't stop thinking about it, especially after seeing Obi Wan on Obi Wan. I just called him Obi Wan Ewan McGregor. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Showing up on stage and saying, "Yes, I am definitely 100% so confirmed." Um, I am really looking forward to Clone Wars. Yeah. I, I was always sad that it wasn't gonna continue, and now it's back. All of our characters are back. My favorite Ahsoka will be, will be Show back. Show me Ahsoka. I ring. got the Ahsoka tunnel ring. I could have pinpointed that Ahsoka and Clone Wars might have been your favorite. Oh my gosh, I'm so 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 excited, and of course the Marvel stuff. Like, yeah. who wouldn't want to watch? Watch Loki, six episodes of Loki, and oh, see what yeah. he, where he's what he's up to with the Tesseract, mm -hmm. and then just some of the little bit more out there stuff. Because obviously, as as geeks, we are excited about the Star Wars stuff, and we're yep. excited about the Marvel stuff. I am looking forward to the Ward, according to Jeff Goldblum. Oh, I can't wait for that as well. Jeff Goldblum's the greatest. He is uh, just the bee's knees. He he really <laughs> is, and I can't wait for him to just gallivant around the world. It's through the National Geographic um, side of the Disney Plus, mm -hmm. so. This is going to be great. I wonder if he was actually filming this two years ago when he when I saw him in the Rite Aid parking lot on Fairfax and Sunset, where he literally was deep within the parking lot. He wasn't even near the entrance. He was deep in the parking lot because it was packed, and I was looking for parking. And Jeff Goldblum was like, "Uh, uh, I'm in the parking lot. Uh, this is uh, this is wow, parking." Yeah, <laughs> he was doing that. It was incredible, and I hope that yes. that's what we're gonna get. Twelve episodes of him just going. Uh, I'm uh, in. Uh, uh, I'm in Bali. Uh, did this you say hi? I didn't say hi. I was in the car and I drove by. And I, I would have like, pulled over. I should have been like, you know what? Forget the grocery. Forget the ice cream. It can melt. Yeah. yeah. I am. I am saying hi to Jeff Goldblum. Uh, I signed up for the three years. Bundle. Did you sign up for the three years? Mm -hmm. I gotta do that. I'm gonna probably do, do that it, too. Do it before uh, Monday, Tuesday. Is it before this? Before the second. Okay. Well, this is Saturday. Saturday, so you guys heard it here. You better get on it right for the, now. For the three year, you can still do like the month to month. If you yeah, want you to. can do month to month. Yeah. If you want that three year deal, pff, lock it in, everyone. <laughs> Great question from Instagram Master of the House. Thank you so much. Let's go on to our fourth question. Wendy Lee, what do we got? And this one comes from Greg K, who writes If Disney hadn't purchased Fox and Dark Phoenix performed the way it did, what do you think Fox's next step would have been with the franchise? Ooh, Ooh. Great question. Yeah. Well, let's take Disney out of the equation and Dark Phoenix comes out and we have our X-Men, we have mm -hmm. our Deadpool, we have our Fantastic Four failing miserably. And so what, they, what are they going to do? Basically, they have all their Fox properties still under that banner. Mm -hmm. They would reboot X-Men. 100% exactly 100%. what I said. Yeah. Uh, and the, look, this movie, I looked up some facts on Google. Yeah. It only generated $65 million in the U.S. and $186 million abroad, uh, like overseas and internationally. The production costs close to 200 million. Yeah, and that's not even marketing. Yeah, that's not even marketing. You're right. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, I Yikes. like Dark Phoenix for what it was, but after Apocalypse, I just thought, wow, they just went and just the, the timeline is all weird because what we got to see in Days of Future Past was so good. And remember how we saw like what was happening with the uh, school, of, uh, the Xavier school where, yeah, school where names, like yeah. I think uh, like Jean Grey was there, Wolverine was there. And then, but the end, with Dark Phoenix, we got her flying into space. It's not called Xavier School anymore. It's yeah. called like like Jean Grey School. So it's it's weird. It's all like really weird, and I didn't love the direct because it left with us with we don't know what for the next movie if they were to continue with the same cast. Right, right. I think it. Yeah, unfortunately, I think. Um, and and I didn't. You know what? I kind of liked Dark Phoenix. I didn't hate it as much as a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I liked it more than Apocalypse actually, because um, I didn't like Apocalypse that much. But. Yeah. I, I'm in the minority on this one. Not a lot of people saw it. 65 million. My God, I thought this movie might open to 100 million. My God, was I way off. Yeah. So obviously the, the audience is tired out for the X-Men version in, in the Fox universe. If I was an executive, Wendy, let's put on our executive caps. If we were there, no Disney, no sale, no nothing. We just have Dark Phoenix doing miserably at the box office. I would reboot the X-Men and I would create a shared universe that included Deadpool, that included Fantastic Four, and all those characters therein. Because yep. that's what they were gonna originally trying to do with Josh Trank's Fantastic Four. That didn't work out, so they really needed somebody to come in, uh, like a Kevin Feige, like a like a Dave Filoni over there at Star mm -hmm. Wars and Lucasfilm. Somebody comes in that knows it. I think Simon Kinberg was that guy. I think they were looking to him. Uh, Lauren Schuler Donner was uh, the the architect of uh, you know the X Men universe for many many years. But yeah, like. It just, it ended, and it didn't end very well for a lot of fans, so I think the next step would be reboot. reboot the whole thing. It's just like, uh, how many reboots are we going to get for these characters? I know, but <laughs> you know what? Say la vie, because if you're fans of Disney and you're fans of the idea of X-Men going to the MCU, which I am. Which I am, I, too. Absolutely. I am too. 
It's going to get a reboot. It's definitely happening, but we just don't know when Kevin Feige is teased that they're not going to really look for uh, the X-Men for another couple like, years. Yeah, they're not even there yet. They they're have, they have yet. all this other MCU stuff they, they planned out and they have to finish. And now, you know, after the acquisition, it's it's really, it's kind of like, how do we make this work in our universe? And I think I want to be patient because I think when it finally does come together, yeah. they're going to make sure that it works because it's finally, we can all, we can use mutants and, you know, event, like together. So it's... Yep. It's going to be, be good. it's going to be yeah. interesting to see. And uh, so great question, Greg K. Thank you very much. Let's go on to our last question of the day for this Saturday mailbag. And it comes from Omar 95, who, no, sorry, Omar 94, who writes, <laughs> hi guys, huge fan since AMC from Tallahassee, Florida. It seems like some movies now are revolving doors for directors. Dan Trachtenberg left Uncharted after David O. Russell, Neil Berger, uh, Seth Gordon, and Sean Levy. My God, look at that oh, wow. list. J.J. Abrams replaced Colin Trevorrow on Star Wars 9, two years after Trevorrow was hired. Ron Howard replaced Lord and Miller during Solo's production. And The Flash keeps changing directors. Oh, boy, it sure does. If directors and studios agreed what film to make, why does this keep happening where they're leaving afterwards? Thanks, and have a nice day. Great question. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, studio politics can be a tricky thing to navigate. And I think um, most cases, and I would say in all cases of these directors, creative differences get in the way 100%. sure they hire a director and they agree on a movie and they go you know what we want it to look like this and they're meeting beforehand and they sign on the dotted line but guess what happens you then go into that development process for the movie and yeah on paper you can say you know what i'm gonna make let's say i'm gonna make uncharted to be like indiana jones meets john wick for lack of a better term okay. you know a lot sure. of action and fights and yeah. um what not that's probably a bad d d comparison but i mean i'd watch it yeah i'd watch <laughs> it too but so i'm gonna make indiana jones meets john wick says uh let's say says sean levy and and uh, sony where it is at right now goes great go make indiana jones meets john wick so he goes and he starts writing it mm -hmm. and he turns in the script and they go you know what we don't actually like that it doesn't work here so we we want to we do... want it to be a family film I don't yeah know. we want it exactly more family we want friendly. a more family friendly less john wick punching in the face kind of stuff <laughs> no and blood so sean levy goes well wait a minute you know we had this conversation creative differences happen all the times in hollywood and what you are referencing here is creative differences lord and miller colin trevorrow especially in those star wars things and all the rotating um you know directors on uncharted even the flash we're on to andy muschietti after having you know jonathan yeah. daly and uh, uh the writers from spider-man who uh did game night you know they were going to do flash then we mm -hmm. had rick famayiwa who was going to direct who did dope he was going to do it yeah my God, who else was on there? there oh my God, Seth Gordon of, Green was gonna not Seth Gordon Green. A lot of good directors that were that were lined up. So many that. great directors lined up for these projects, but in all cases, yeah, they might agree going in on what the kind of movie, the, the overall movie they're looking to make. But at the end of the day, I think it's creative differences. Wendy, do you? What do you think? I mean, I totally agree with you, and I think it's just hard because you're everybody comes in and you're excited to, to jump on this project, and, yeah. and lots of what to what you said is they, you know, they they have this idea, they hash it out in the initial meeting, and they come back yeah. for a second meeting, and or they start shooting, and all of a sudden the studio says, "We really wanted this," or a producer can say something like this, or something changes. There's all moving parts all the time, and I think directors. They're hired to tell a, a story, and yep. when they come in and they fully immerse they, themselves into the story, into these characters, and they have a vision of where they want to see it to go, and when too much of it changes, mm -hmm. where their original story isn't intact anymore, it's just a shell of it, they're like, well, I am really passionate about this project. Right. I really wanted to see it that way. If we can't work it out, I got I to gotta go, and, and you know, and I don't... I don't personally think i hope it's not if they you know kind of left it amicably and not like shouting in the rooms we don't know we're not in these rooms so again these are speculations right. but when they say creative differences i really don't think it's anything more than that yeah i think that's the main cause anyways yeah i, I believe it's the main cause and and w one thing that you were saying wendy i even thought about actors a-list actors could come in and say you know what i want this I need this for, you know, I'm going to be on the poster. My name's yep. on top billing. I would like it this way. That happens quite a bit, I've heard. Uh, listen to the Collider Live Joe Carnahan appear, uh, uh, appearance on the show. Joe Carnahan was going to direct Bad Boys 3, and he left over creative differences, and he hinted at that it had to do with not seeing eye to eye with Will Smith. That's a big example right there, because Will Smith, Bad Boys 3, 
the genie, one of the biggest actors in the yeah, in the planet. one of the most well known actors internationally. Like yep. people know, like my mom knows Will Smith. She doesn't even watch movies. Exactly, <laughs> and that was a, an A list actor coming and not seeing eye to eye with the director. So in all cases, it's created differences even after they decide on the movie they want to say yeah. uh, or, or make and sign on the dotted line. Yeah, so. any anything can change just like that, and you know we we've seen it. I've seen it personally from like small production to. It, you know, in the same vein where a director or a producer or somebody has to end up leaving because this isn't what we initially thought it was going to be. Right. I really am passionate about it, but it doesn't look like the end of the project will look like what we discussed initially. Yep. I don't feel comfortable with it. I'm going to leave. And I like that what you brought up about the actor. too. Yeah. It's they do play a part because, you know, they're the one they're, their faces are going to be all over this movie. Right. So our like somebody say we take Will Smith for an example, like his face would be on the poster. Would that get your attention? Most likely, yes. Yeah. So, absolutely. you know, he's also not wrong in coming in and saying, this is kind of what I want. It's and yep. everything has to be taken into consideration. It's it's a collaborative process, and that goes for the directors, the writers, the actors, and the studio. There sometimes, though, my my thing is, I wish studios would give directors just the creative freedom. A little bit more, yeah. But they're holding on to some pretty giant purse strings there, so I can understand wanting to get involved. And sometimes studios can run it into the ground because of this. So. Yeah, that's our answer. And that'll do it for Mailbag on this Saturday. Thank you for joining us. Remember, again, if you want to send your question, you can send them to our email, mailbag at collider.com, or look for our call to action with the hashtag Collider Mailbag on Twitter and Instagram. We can get your questions that way. Wendy Lee, where can the people find you? Oh, cool. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Wendy Lee Zaney. If you're on YouTube, you can find me at the Movie Couple channel right there there it is thank you for joining me wendy and everybody thank you for joining us on this saturday edition of mailbag john roca will be back next weekend but stay tuned tomorrow we'll have an all-new mailbag where guess what josh mccuga is coming back on a sunday coming in hot joining me for mailbag so tune in tomorrow we'll see you then